Hello everyone, Mark here and today I'm just going to be doing an unboxing first impressions video and sharing my birthday present with you guys. Now the other day me and my nephew went to the model shop and I picked this beast up for my birthday present. Um, I'm really excited to actually get it out of the box and have a nice closer look. I thought I'd do that on video and share it with you guys. So I'm not going to talk too much about the box itself. Uh, I just really want to get it out of the box and have a nice closer look. Um, but as boxes go, it's quite a nice stylish box and it tells you quite a lot of information, but we're going to run over that in the video. So let me quickly get my knife and we'll unbox it spin this round now this box is massive and this monster truck actually weighs a ton as well so let's have a quick look at the top okay then so as you can see i picked up the armor granite 4x4 3s blx one tenth scale ready to run monster truck now this thing is a beast i've seen quite a lot of good reviews on it some things that I'm not too keen on as well, uh, but I'm just fussy. Nothing's going to 100% please me anyway. Um, but being fussy, there's nothing wrong with that. So let's actually get it out the box and have a nice close look. And what I'll do, once I've got it all out the box, I'm actually going to reposition the camera as well. Uh, so give you guys a nice closer look. So let's get it all out nice. Okay, I'm pretty excited about this. Okay, so let's get this, this thing weighs a ton. Okay, so let's move that to one side. Get the manuals out. Put this box to one side as well. Okay, I think this is just a transmitter. Yep, just a transmitter. Massive box just for a transmitter. Okay. nice okay so everything is out of the box so what i'm actually going to do is reposition the camera a little bit and then we'll be right back okay then so now everything is out of the box i can give you a nice closer look now i'm going to say straight away i do really like how this truck is looking it's nice and chunky now i have seen this truck obviously online and stuff like that but it's good to actually get your hands on it and get your own thoughts and opinions so i'm really liking it it feels like a tank so what we'll do we'll quickly go over some of the boring bits first so let's quickly crack open the instruction manual see if it's any good so you've got your bag of bits here basically some suspension spacers, some allen keys to obviously adjust some of the things on the truck as well as remove some of the screws. You've got your hex nut removal tool as well as a couple of other tools either end of that. It's plastic, I would have preferred it to be metal if I'm honest because plastic just don't last long when you're working on metal um, bits and bobs. So yeah, I would have preferred that to be metal but it's not gonna be a problem. Next, you've got a little sticker sheet here. I'm not sure I'm gonna be using them, but it's nice to actually have them included. You've got a user manual here. Let's see if it's actually any good. Okay, yeah, so it basically tells you everything you need to know. Some of the basic settings, how to uh, program your electric speed controller and stuff like that. And then you've got a little technical pack guide here basically shows you how to remove the um, the brushless motor and spur gear which is all a modular system which is really cool that's one of the things I really liked about this truck it's basically idiot proof as well when it comes to meshing the gears because it's got preset hull positions so you can't even go wrong when it comes to uh, changing pinion gears and meshing it up against your spur gear something like that is very simple because people do destroy their spur gears just because they've not messed the gears up properly so only being able to do it in certain positions depending on the gears you use is actually a really good idea uh, and then you've got a nice big exploded diagram 
Okay, the transmitter. The transmitter does feel a bit plasticky, if I'm honest. And to be fair, this is not a cheap truck. This costs like £270. So this transmitter does feel a bit cheap and nasty. Um, my FlySky transmitters are better than this. Uh, but it runs on a Spectrum protocol. And Spectrum are a good brand. They're one of the best brands. So I am actually surprised that this feels so cheap. Don't get me wrong. It's... Um, it's not a high-end monster truck at £270, but it is one of the good, uh, one of the best bashing ones that I've seen um, out there for this price bracket, anyway. Um, but yeah, the transmitter feels okay. The wheel feels nice, even though it's plasticky. The movement is nice. You've got quite a lot of movement, um, but it's not loose. It's not flimsy. It's got nice tension behind it. Now, on top of the transmitter here, you've got your throttle reversing switch your steering reversing switch your throttle trim your steering trim your throttle rate so you can turn the amount of throttle um, you have per trigger pull movement um, and you can also do the same on the steering you have a steering rate so you can turn down how much the front wheels will steer depending on how much you turn the uh, transmitter wheel which is really handy another handy thing is this throttle limiting switch now you probably saw from one of my reviews on a, um on a different transmitter that has a throttle limited switch this thing's a beast it's it's well i think it weighs nearly three kilos if not a lot more we'll have a look at that in a minute um if this thing hits you or hits a wall it's going to destroy the person it hits or destroy the uh car itself if it hits the wall and it does 50 mile an hour so it's good to have a throttle limit into it so i can reduce it down to 50 percent 75 percent or 100 percent it's powered by four aa batteries so let's quickly put some in okay so let's put these aa batteries in just like so Okay, job done. And there's the on off switch. When that light uh, starts to flash, it means you need to replace your transmitter battery. So it's got a um, little battery indicator, which is also nice. But yeah, the transmitter does feel a bit cheap, but it's not too bad at all. And as long as it works and does the job, from reviews that I've seen though, people are changing these transmitters because apparently they've got a slight delay um, i'm going to obviously test that when it comes to taking the truck out over the next few days if i do need to change the transmitter i'll just use one of my fly sky ones it's not a problem whatsoever the model on this transmitter is the spectrum stx2 so yeah okay so let's put that aside let's actually have a look at the truck because that's what i actually want to do so there's a bind plug as well chuck that to one side so let's have a nice closer look at this truck. Let's peel off this. Oh, nice and shiny. Now I must admit. Okay, so let's have a nice closer look at the truck itself. Now I apologize in advance guys. I'm gonna be using my gimbal and mobile phone for this bit because I think it might just make it a little bit easier and it'll be able to um, you'll be able to get a better look at the actual truck while I'm looking at it as well So let's quickly go over this. It does look really nice now one little thing straight away. I love these little um, body clip Bungee cords here. It's gonna just make things a lot easier when it comes to uh, Removing the clips as well as you're not gonna lose them either because of that uh, Now I've got arthritis in my fingers and um, and body shell clips can be a bit of a pain. Anything little and strong can be a bit of a pain for my fingers. Uh, so these little retainer cords here just make my life a little bit easier. As you can see, no problem in removing that. Now the body shell itself, to be honest, I'm not keen on the color scheme. I'm not really a Larry type color scheme person. I much prefer white, black, bit of yellow, um, so yeah the color scheme is not entirely to my taste but that's just personal preference it's not that bad um and i'm pretty sure it'll grow on me the quality of the shell though is quite rigid um but i think it's going to crack um relatively easy by that 
mean I mean guys it's not going to just be constantly breaking on like the first run or anything like that but these are bashing vehicles and that's what they're for they're bashing vehicles so you're kind of putting through their paces and because of that you're going to get cracking shells and stuff like that now the back panel here is prone to crack from what I've seen from people's reviews anyway because what actually happens is the shell flexes and then smacks up against this bit here the uh, shock mount and stuff like that and body mount and it puts pressure on this bit here and it cracks so I'm going to be reinforcing this bit straight away i'll probably do that tomorrow um, before i take it out for a big run i'm going to reinforce the body shell anyway use gorilla tape bit of foam and this body shell is going to be literally three or four times as strong it's still flex it's just going to be nice and um rigid as well as flexing just be like three times as thick uh gorilla tape is awesome stuff so let's put this body shell to one side um, the more I look at it, the more the colour scheme actually grows on me. Um, so let's quickly have a nice closer look at the truck itself before I talk a little bit about some of the features and stuff like that. Now I apologise straight away, I can see the gimbal in my camera, uh, but that's because I'm on widescreen just so I can get a bit more of a comfortable view when I'm looking at the vehicle and when showing you the vehicle itself. So what we do, we quickly run over some of the features why I enjoy looking at my new truck. So what we got here, we got, um, you can fully adjust the ride height apparently on this vehicle, but it does it in a way that I'm not too keen on, which is one of the downsides. Basically to adjust the ride height, all you would do is you would put spacers in the suspension. So you pull the spacer clip, uh, retainer down you'd add more spacers if you put more spaces in these bits here if you put more spaces in it strengthens or stiffens up the suspension which will then raise it up um, and same in reverse if you take the spacers out uh, take the spacers out it softens the suspension and lowers the ride height now i'd much prefer it to have adjustable suspension mounts holes so you can actually adjust the suspension position i'd much prefer that i've got that on every other vehicle that i own this does not have that which i'm a little bit shocked about to be honest but apparently this vehicle comes at its best out the box that's what they advertise so that's what they've gone with this is a simple design and some of the things blows me away with um, t attention to detail on how simple that they've made this vehicle to work on and that is one of the little features so it's already meant to be at its optimum ride height which is fine as long as it is um, that's fine now these shocks are oil filled shocks but they're not adjustable like I said there's no thread to adjust tension you use um, spacers which is fine uh, these are prone to leak apparently so I might get um, upgraded shocks we will see how well it goes you've got a lovely shock cover here that just fits on the shock that just will pre uh, prevent dust dirt and also it will give a bit of bashing protection to the shock as well and I'm pretty sure you've got it on the rear as well yeah you've got it on the rear and these shocks are huge the rear shocks are like six inches um, high so yeah they're massive massive shocks I will probably upgrade the shocks over time but I like to bash my vehicles as they are I want to see exactly how well they perform first before I start changing everything you've got lovely tires on here these are um, multi-spoke chrome tires now these rims are massive they're three inch rims with five inch tires now if I quickly show you if I get a can of coke there you go they're bigger than a can of coke um, nice large rims and they use a um, multi-terrain tire and that is a D-Bots Fortress tire 
These tires are probably the best tires that I've seen on any of my monster trucks. And as you guys know, I've got many vehicles and I've had many vehicles in the past. These are by far the best uh, tires that I've had on any of my vehicles, full stop. Maybe my old uh, T-Max, my Traxxas T-Max, maybe the tires on there, the old tractor tread tires, uh, but they were more good for off-road. They're not really multi-terrain like these. So these feel beautiful. They really do. And like I say, they're massive. You've got a lovely extended height dirt protector there on the chassis. This is a module piece as well. This can come off if you want to remove it. Don't know why you would want to unless you want to reduce weight. Because this thing is heavy. Probably weighs... Well, we'll see exactly how much it weighs in a minute. But... It's heavy. Uh, let's have a quick look. Nearly three kilos. So it's quite a heavy vehicle. Um, but these protector guards here, they're going to keep dust, dirt, grime, mud, even water out of the uh, chassis. Not 100%, but it's going to do a pretty good job. You've got adjustable body mounts here, front and rear, uh, so I can adjust the height of my body. I'll probably raise it up a little bit. That will help clearance um, and will help um, the body shell last a bit longer as well so it's not going to be smashed against the uh, body post mounts and stuff like that and the suspension mounts but I do want to do my um, velcro mod where I hold the body shell on using velcro as well so I can't raise it up too much but um, I love these, these are a great little feature, a very cool little feature. It also has fully adjustable turnbuckles, let's see if I can get a nice closer look in there for you. You've got fully adjustable turnbuckles so I can adjust the camber and toe. Um, and these are nice and thick turnbuckles as well, heavy duty plastic, nice steel um, shaft in the centre there. The thread, if it's going to break, it's going to break on the thread, that's for sure. These bits here ain't going to break, it's going to break on the thread. So we will see how uh, strong these are when it comes to bashing. This is armour, so apparently they're pretty tough, as the armour saying says. So we will see, but if it breaks, I'll just upgrade them. I'll put some titanium ones in there. And obviously I can adjust the ones on the rear also. You've got nice double wishbone suspension. Uh, and the suspension on this feels beautiful. It really does feel nice. Um, nice springy action. Doesn't bottom out too easy. There's nice stiff tension there. I'm probably going to remove these spacers just so my rear ride height is the same as my front ride height. Because at the moment it's um, dipping down a little bit on the back and when I accelerate it's going to dip more anyway even though it's four wheel drive it will still always um, go to the rear because the rear is the dominant diff um, and then it's going to obviously right, uh, drag down a little bit so I'm going to stiffen up the rear loosen up the front that even it out a little bit um, but Oh, it just feels really nice. This whole thing just feels really, really nicely made. I'm really, I'm happy. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, I'm happy. Like I say, it's not a cheap truck at £270. It's not cheap, but it's not that expensive. Um, and it was my birthday money, so birthday money well spent. Now it's got an adjustable wheelie bar here. This really uh, wheelie bar is super rigid though. You adjust it. By taking out the screw here, then you can adjust the pivot angle of the wheelie bar. Now, from what I've seen from other people's reviews and stuff like that, because these wheelie bars are really rigid, if you have a bad landing, and by bad, guys, I mean massive, massive landings, 20 feet kind of jumps, um, you can break these because there's no flex, no play in it. Uh, whereas, like my Traxxas models, you've this bit here is held in via a clip and when you have a bad landing or even not so much of a bad landing it can unclip that stops it breaking but it can be a pain in the bum because it always unclips whereas this is never going to unclip but it's quite rigid so that can actually cause problems in itself uh, but i like the chunkiness of it that's for sure it's got metal discs front and rear and the 
the main diff on there is huge. It's 51 millimeters, which is a massive, massive diff. Um, and I'm pretty sure that all steel as well, it's not cheap aluminium like you get in some or brass. It's high quality steel diffs. Um, and one thing I really like about this vehicle, which is one of the main reasons I was looking at it to begin with is the module system. Now for me to remove the motor, the um, main gear with the slipper clutch, it's literally the case of undoing this one screw, taking out the drive shaft, flipping this bit down, flipping that bit up, and I can remove the whole module. That's insane. Um, tension to detail just to make that so simple like that is is outstanding in my opinion it's it's highly impressive i must admit um we've looked at the motor a little bit but i'll give you a bit of details this is a massive motor this is the biggest one temp scale motor i've got in any of my vehicles it is a um armor blx 3660 motor so 3660 is the size um and it's a 3200 kv censored motor so being censored you're going to get a nice smooth action with the trigger hopefully uh, i might need to change the radio gear we will see like i say i don't want to just take everyone's word for it i want to test it myself first but if i have to change the radio gear i'll change the radio gear it's not a problem moving over to the electric speed controller here giving a nice closer look this thing's quite beefy as well and this is a blx 100 100 amp waterproof brushless electric speed controller that is uh compatible with two and three cell lipo um, on free cell this should have no problem doing 50 mile an hour and i've seen people do faster as well by putting in a much larger um pinion gear as well talking about pinion gears where this thing is also suited for beginners it's got an uh, an idiot proof as such gear meshing system so if i want to put a different pinion gear on there and i'm unsure of how to correctly mesh my gears which can be a problem for some people and not meshing gears properly like not meshing your pinion gear to your spur gear properly will destroy your spur gear um, so you have to make sure you perfectly mesh it. This has got a basic system where I'll put a little picture or something in the top left hand corner. Depending on what size pinion gear you use will depend on the hole that you fit it to on the mount and they're all marked and it automatically meshes the gears for you correctly. So that is another simple but very clever idea. Um, the servo is a... Uh, what servo is it? This is an ADS 7M waterproof 7 kilogram of torque metal geared servo. Now 7 uh, seven kilogram of torque might not sound a lot because uh, you can obviously, some of you guys probably know you can get like 20 kilograms, 25 kilograms. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, some of those servos that are stand, uh, stated to be that high in torque they're not they're just not that high in torque and where they also suffer is the speed quite a lot of super high torque servos have a low turning speed um, and you need a good turning speed or otherwise your steering will feel sluggish and delayed no matter how high your torque is now is this any good not sure yet uh, from some people's reviews they've been saying it's good enough other people are saying it's not so yet again i've got to test that but if need be i've got a beast of a servo to put in and this is these are still to these day one of the best servos you can get it's a high tech high torque high speed servo this thing will probably set you back about 50 quid to be honest um if not more fully aluminium casing it's just a super high quality high tech have been around for many many years and their quality is just outstanding so if i don't get on well with this i'll just put my high tech servo in there and then job done i ain't got to really um muck around with anything else we've gone over the radio gear a little bit guys like i've said it's just a basic spectrum radio 
not great um but as long as it works i don't care if i have to change the radio gear and use a better one so be it i've got other radio gears and to be fair i'm getting so many models now um it'd probably be easier to have a few of them running off of one transmitter anyway and my fly sky gt3c will do that no problem whatsoever so i'll give you a quick look at the chassis a bit longer it's got a telescopic drive shaft here which is another awesome design you literally pull this down until it goes it's hard doing it one-handed you pull it down until it pops off the cog there and then you can literally raise it up pull it all the way out such a simple but very cool design and you also adjust your spur gear like that as well you obviously retract the uh, main shaft put an allen key in there and you can tighten up and loosen up your spur gear without removing too many major components which is also really good you've got a nice battery tray here this battery tray is super large going to have no problem storing a high capacity free cell lipo and it's velcro into place now velcro can be good but bad as well because it can make using different size lipos very easy but sometimes it could be really fiddly if i fully take that out like so now you imagine i've just put a massive battery like that in i've got to then try and feed this past the battery through that little lip into that and then back out all while i've got a big battery in there which is going to be a pain in the bum <laughs> but you kind of work around it you find little ways to make it easier and stuff like that uh, so yeah nice little attention to detail it uses a massive ic5 connector this connector is huge i'll quickly show you compared to a dean's connector as you can see there's a little dean's get you a better view there's a dean's there's an ic5 there's a huge difference i've got a converter so i can use it on dean's but i'm going to be probably changing the connectors to an xd uh, xt90 or maybe an xt60 we will see or i might even go with these because like i say for for my fingers and my arthritis is just getting worse um massive connectors like this just makes my life so much easier um so if you want a big connector i'll just keep it like this and these are smart connectors as well for the new smart batteries that are coming out um which are hugely expensive but kind of worth it now if i flip open uh flip it upside down pull it on its side for you and show you the underside of the chassis once again this is a modular system so the center chassis is a separate part to the front uh, the rear and front skid plates they can all be removed individually so that's great if you just smash your rear skid, pla uh, skid plate or front skid plate or center plate you're you've not got to change the whole thing you can just change each and individual part which is awesome that's a really good idea the suspension arms are chunky um and very very tough plastic by the feel of it so can't see them breaking anytime soon um, and one other thing i quickly want to show you look at the size hopefully you can see this guys let me try and get a better view for you because these are massive look at the size of those hubs the steering hubs on that that's huge that is huge that's probably 2.5 inches of um steering hub there <laughs> that's insane so that should be very strong and also these use a 14 millimeter metal hex nut rather than a standard um 12 millimeter that a lot of 110 scale cars come with um so yeah i like the fact it uses a slightly bigger hex nut as well uh but yeah that is it guys i don't want to go on too much longer because starting to talk way too much so that's it guys like i said i just wanted to share my present with you um and i know it's a long video but i didn't want to rush it i want to share my opinions um while i'm looking over it myself and i'm very happy i bought that i'm going to be doing loads more videos on this guys upgrades bashing videos um Obviously, when it comes to me fixing things on it, I'll fix it on video, talk about the upgrades, talk about things I don't like as well. 
but for now i just want to show you it so that's it guys thank you so much for bearing with me and watching this video if you found it interesting please hit that like button if you're not already subscribed please do hit that subscribe button it means a lot and it does help me out um, and like i said i've got loads more videos coming up and loads more videos in my collection as well if you are subscribed please hit that bell notification button so you can stay up to date on all my upcoming videos but most of all guys thank you so much for watching and happy rcm take care bye bye